بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And that will become clearer with the next hadith. So the next hadith is about the Dajjal when he is outside the city of Medina, unable to enter. But one of the, some of the things that will happen and some of the powers that Allah will have given him uh, are discussed in the next hadith, and this is the final hadith. Hadith number 915, Anabi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu qal, it is related from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu that he said, Haddathana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadithun tawilun anid dajjal. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related a very long hadith to us about the Dajjal. فَكَانَ فِي مَا حَدَّثَنَا بِهِ أَنْ قَالْ So, of the things, of what he said to us about the Dajjal, was that أَنْ قَالْ he also said, يَأْتِ الدَّجَّالُ The Dajjal will arrive. وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ نِقَابِ الْمَدِينَةِ and it will be haram and forbidden for him to enter the streets of Medina. فَيَنزِلُ بِبَعْضِ السِّبَاخِ الَّتِي بِالْمَدِينَةِ So he will settle in some of that salty land which is close to Medina. I'll explain. فَيَخْرُجُ إِلَيْهِ يَوْمَئِذٍ رَجُلٌ So on that day, a man will go out to him from Medina. هُوَ خَيْرُ النَّاسِ أَوْ مِنْ خَيْرِ النَّاسِ he will be the best of people, or one of the best of people. Meaning the narrator does not remember one of the two. For يقول, so he will say, this good man, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ الدَّجَّالُ الَّذِي حَدَّثْنَا عَنْكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَدِيثًا I bear testimony that indeed you are that Dajjal of which Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم related things to us and spoke to us Spoke to us. فَيَقُولُ الدَّجَّالُ So the Dajjal will say, أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ قَتَلْتُ هَذَا ثُمَّ أَحْيَيْتُهُ هَلْ تَشْكُونَ فِي الْأَمْرِ Tell me, if I kill this one, then I resurrect him. Will you doubt the matter? فَيَقُولُونَ لَا So they will say no. فَيَقْتُلُهُ He will then kill him. ثُمَّ يُحْيِيهُ Then he will raise him to life again. فَيَقُولُ حِينَ يُحْيِيهُ then he will say, when he has resurrected him, وَاللَّهِ مَا كُنْتُ قَطُّ أَشَدْ مِنِّي بَصِيرَةً الْيَوْمِ By Allah, never was I as perceptive as I am today. فَيَقُولُ الدَّجَّال So the Dajjal will say, أَقْتُلُهُ I will kill him. فَلَا يُصَلَّتُ عَلَيْهِ But he will not be given power over him. That's just a literal translation of the hadith. Let me explain. Prophet Sayyidina Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu says, that the Prophet ﷺ related a very long hadith to us. He delivered a very long sermon and discourse to us about the Jah. A very long one. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri only mentions this part. And of the things that the Prophet ﷺ related to us was this, that he also said, the Jah will come, and he will come to Medina, but it will be haram for him to enter the city of Medina and enter the streets of Medina. So he will be forced to remain outside. So what he will do is that he will camp and settle on some of the salty marshes that will be outside Medina. A sibakh means those lands that are extremely salty as a result of which the the soil and the climate there are not conducive to the growth of anything meaningful. So, undesirable land. So he will settle and camp there, outside Medina, in some of the salty land. And some of the ulama say this is towards the north of Medina. It's towards the north of Medina. And he won't be alone. He'll have his army with him. And his followers. From the city of Medina, and this is a time when, as mentioned in the previous hadith, there will be three quakes. 
So the believers will remain in the city, but the munafiqeen and the others that the Prophet ﷺ mentions, that every munafiq and every kafir will leave the city of Medina and its safety and go out believing that they will find refuge with the jar. So they will go out to him. Then, one of the people of Medina, who will be the best, or one of the best, will come out. And he will actually be taken out. He will go out and the, pe- the army of the Dajjal will grab him, the people of the Dajjal will grab him, and they will say to him, do you believe in our master, the Dajjal? And he will refuse to believe. So they will intend to kill him, but then before killing him, they'll say, let's take him to the Dajjal himself. So he, they will be, he will be brought before the Dajjal. The Dajjal, remember, is no great beast, he's a man. The, and of course, the Prophet ﷺ says, Al-A'war, he is blind in one eye. So the Dajjal, this one pious man will be brought before the Dajjal. The Dajjal will then say to his congregation of followers, أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ قَتَلْتُ هَذَا ثُمَّ أَحْيَيْتُهُ هَلْ تَشْكُونَ فِي الْأَمْرِ Meaning, you lot tell me, here is someone who has been brought before me. He will consider him to be a plaything. Here is someone who has been brought before me. You lot tell me, I claim to be God. And some of you doubt me. If I kill him, and not only kill him, but after having killed him, I resurrect him and bring him back to life. Will you doubt my affair? And they will say no. So although it's not mentioned here, from some narrations we learn that the Dajjal will actually kill him by splitting him into two. And being a man, the Dajjal will then split the body into two, put one after having executed him by sawing him, sawing him in half, he will stand in between the two parts of his body and say that, there, I have killed him. Can you see he is dead? And standing in between the two parts of his body, the Dajjal will then say, I will now resurrect him. And Allah will give him that much power. He will actually bring him back to life. When he brings him back to life, all of this has taken place outside the city of Medina. He will say to everyone, do you believe me? They're obviously, uh, they believed in him to be God anyway. And those that didn't, their doubts will be dispelled. So when he resurrects him, he will then demand of this pious man that, do you now believe in me that I am God? And he will say, I have the fire and I have water. But his water will be Jahannam, or uh, of the effects of Jahannam, his water will be fire and his fire will be water. That will be the nature of his Dajjal, his deception, grand deception. So he will say to him that, do you now believe in me? And that pious man will say, Wallahi, ma kuntu ashad, ma kuntu qattu, ashad basiratan minni al that by Allah, never was I, was I as perceptive before as I am this day. I know, and remember earlier he says, Ashhadu annaka al-dajjalu alladhi haddathna anka Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam haditha. I bear testimony that you are that same dajjal of whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related his hadith to us. So when he kills him and resurrects him, he will now say, you tell me, am I not a God and do you not believe in me? He will then say, wallahi, I've never believed with as much conviction as I do now, that you are the Dajjal. Then he will attempt to seize him again. And the Dajjal in his anger and fury will say, I will kill him now. But he won't be able to kill him the second time. He won't be able to kill him. And then the pious man will announce that now is the time from my moment onwards that the Dajjal will never be able to harm anyone. I, he won't be able to kill anyone. He's not able to do it with me. He won't be able to do it with anybody else.